Welcome to the Prepare to Repair show with your host, R.J. Graham Plumbing's very own Steve Suarez. For the next hour, Steve and his expert guest will help take the fear out of home improvement by answering homeowner questions. Gain valuable information from Steve's 20 plus years of experience to help you save valuable time, money, and frustration on your next home repair project. Become an empowered homeowner and prepare to repair. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. And I want to thank everybody for joining us for the uh, Prepare to Repair show. Um, I also want to take a minute to thank everybody who has listened and followed the show since day one. It is greatly appreciated. And uh, we are slowly evolving and doing our best every week to make it uh, a show that is beneficial as far as home entertainment and community related. And also, I want to thank Evan, who is a producer here, who has helped me out from day one, who has, you know, given me advice and everything that that I'm needing to just continuously make this a better product every week. Thank you, Evan. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you, you it, it's all you. I'm just here pushing buttons and making sure the show gets on the air and, and sounds good. You're the one who uh, does all the work. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he puts in a ton of work getting ready for the show each and every week. I appreciate it. I, I stress myself out trying to put way this in Way too week. much. You stress <laughs> yourself out way too much. I, I worry about it. I do the same thing with just running my company. It's just I want to make sure everything is perfect. I'm, you know, I'm perfectionist, which is probably my, it's good and bad. So I do appreciate all the help, Evan. You're so. certainly welcome. On today's show, I want to, uh, I'm going to welcome uh, Tim Helmer, who is a plumbing, in, who is a Will County plumbing inspector. And we will also have with us, joining us is, is he joins us every week, Tom Maslowski with what's going down in downtown Jamestown. He will re, he will grace us with his presence and he will be talking about what's happening in the area. And he will also be talking about Good Eats, which we all look forward to considering it's lunchtime. Also, speaking of Good Eats, tune into the Rock and Roll Diner on 95.9 The River, where the featured restaurant this week is Mad Hatchet in Shorewood. Listen for your chance to win a $25 gift card sponsored by us, RJ Graham Plumbing. We would also, speaking of as we're going to continue on the Good Eats, we would like to congratulate all the winners of our gift card giveaway. We really appreciate your participation uh, to the show and one of our winners, his name is Kenneth Wild, asked that his gift card be donated to help veterans. His gift card was donated to the Veterans Assistance Commission of Will County in Joliet. We also had an additional gift card that was donated from Sills Chop House in Rockdale. This, too, was donated to the Veterans Commission in Joliet uh, of Will County. So this is a, a, a very good uh, a very good organization that's doing its best to help out uh, area area veterans so they can use all the help they can get and this is one thing we're trying to do so if any any assistance that anybody can give you know please uh, throw it their way the veterans deserve it also and this is special going out to our uh, listeners out there that are seniors and uh, most most places you get a senior discount. What we're doing here at RJ Grand Plumbing on July 2nd, we will be having a senior day. On this day, we will be offering special pricing to seniors. This offer is exclusive to WJOL listeners. Uh, appointments are limited, so call today to get uh, to schedule your appointment and get on the list. And I also would like to wish a very uh, important beautiful person a happy birthday who is celebrating this on june 10th uh he is tinley park's most eligible bachelor and handsome and successful rick suarez he is my brother uh congratulations sir you are now officially old and anybody who's heard that old adage that uh, if you can't find a weird one in your family it's probably you that's wrong uh i am i know i'm the weird one in the family and he is too so congratulate him on that so we've got a great show and we are going to be talking to uh tim helmer with uh the will county he's a will county plumbing inspector a lot of knowledge has spoken to him and met him on uh, multiple jobs and uh always uh helpful always happy to give a helpful hand advice from uh you know to 
contractors such as myself, and also be able to help out homeowners if they have any questions. And uh, so that's definitely something we have coming after the dealing with municipalities, dealing with uh, the um, the governing bodies regarding work being done in the house. And I wanted to have someone like you who can basically try to let's let's get rid of these. Uh, these mints that people have on it so they can use the, uh, the county or use the, uh, uh, the municipalities as a resource in, as, as assistance rather than an adversary. Very well said. So I do appreciate that. A couple questions I have that I wanted to discuss with you was the, uh, well, permits. That's one thing people talk about is permits. The pros and cons, like say, you know, I want to do this. I don't want to get a permit because, well, one of the things I've heard them talk about is, well, my taxes will go up or something like that. I'm not really sure how all that works, but um, you, you you want to pull a permit, right? I mean, you do. Um, there are several reasons for it. Um, that is, um, to the best of my knowledge, one of the myths to dispel is that somehow the county will know that you improved your home and therefore you will be reassessed that doesn't happen um and you, you want to get a permit to ensure that you're getting uh, quality workmanship exactly well you're an independent independent voice independent eyes so basically you have the homeowner who is getting the work and you have say a contractor such as myself that is doing the work and well, the homeowner is not really going to be in the know because, well, they if they knew, they wouldn't be hiring a professional like, you know, such as myself. And me, I should know. And if I, you need a third party such as yourself to say, okay, uh, Mr. Mrs. Homeowner, this is, was done. This was done satisfactory to code and they did a great job or well you know what this guy that you have here is not very good and you need to get somebody in here that is qualified um <laughs> am i wrong no you are exactly correct and that does happen in order for the uh, plumbing permit for instance to be issued in the first place a plumber has to have three things. We throw these terms out. We heard, we've heard license bonded and insured so often that it's almost a throwaway line. But the uh, license, you need a plumbing license in order to obtain a permit. You need to be bonded. That is a relatively, depending on how you look at it, it's 20000 is the minimum. That pile of money is over here just sitting there as insurance. In case you have a problem with the contractor, you can get to that bond. So that's licensed, then bonded, then insured. Insured ensures that the contractor has workman's comp on his or her people and liability insurance on themselves or their company. Because the last thing you would want to do is... Um, have a contractor work for you under a homeowner permit. That's a another concept or a, a myth that we should attempt to dispel. You want me to go into that? Oh, sure. Yeah, well, oh, what sure. I usually call what you just said is it's accountability and responsibility to the job and liability. And you have those three things when you hire a contractor. <laughs> so, you yeah. just should. So, and accountability, responsibility, reliability, inspector protect. You just, that's just how you sound. It's great. It, well, that's that's exactly what we want to have. But you've got some people that are what you know when they have uh, they they don't want to be in that permit process. And like you said, homeowners they they want the homeowners to pull the permits. Now, what have you run in with that? Exactly. Um, most of the time, a contractor who tells you, Mr. or Mrs. Homeowner, to get the permit yourself and they'll do the work for you. They have a reason for that, and the reason is almost always negative. Either they cannot or don't want to get the permit themselves. Our uh, permit technicians, our staff, emails the insurance carriers, emails the bond carrier, and proves that 
and the state license, the state plumbing license, or a Chicago plumbing license, um, the, they ensure that these three things are in place before the permit is ever issued. And when a, when a contractor comes along and says, why don't you just get a permit, it'll be easier, it'll only cost 100 and that's because they don't want to be responsible. And when a homeowner pulls a permit, the homeowner is completely responsible for everything. Right. And isn't that the reason why you're hiring a contractor? Because they're in a no, they should take responsibility? Yes. And in my opinion, if, a, if any contractor asks the homeowner to get the permit themselves, you're staying in front of the wrong contractor. Well, I it's always said simple. I, I wouldn't do it. Well, I always stated that nobody has ever benefited at being the uh, benefited from being lied to. And if somebody Correct. is not willing to put skin in the game and say, look, you're, I'm going to do this job for you for X amount of dollars. This is what I'm bringing to the table. I'm taking everything, the responsibility of that job, because that's why you're hiring a professional. And if right. they don't have all that stuff, then uh, why hire them? I mean, why you take 100% of, if you're the homeowner, like you said, you take 100% responsibility, 100% of the liability, and they just get the money and run. Exactly. Yeah, that don't Put that under the, under the column of always and never. Never give a contractor all the money until they are finished. Because that's a, that, that I run into that all the time. You try and get someone back on a swimming pool or uh, a deck, for instance, and um, this especially happens with the um, seniors, unfortunately, because they don't, for the most part, they don't want debt. And all some unscrupulous contractor has to say is, "Well, you don't want to owe me money," and so they they pay. And then if it's not right, we have no leverage to get them back. So your your listeners need to know that as well, that if they withhold a partial payment is fine, but if they withhold a final payment, which should be, in my opinion, at least a third, then um, they have leverage and they will inspire the contractor to return if there's a problem. Well, I always, and tell me if, uh, you know, what's your opinion on this is what we've always done is a, you have set points on your payment points and they usually will coincide with a certain progress of the job. So that means if, you know, a, a, say a third will take you to point A, that pretty much will cover that up. The other third will take you to point B. And then once you're done, which is usually point C, that's when the final, the final inspection, everything is all set and ready to go. Because that, and the and reason why you do it that way, at least I found, is at any point in time, if that job goes on hiatus, you're all caught up. You're all good to go. Exactly. Uh, banks do that with construction loans. If you borrowed three hundred thousand to build a house, they're not just going to give you the check. <laughs> yeah. they, they do it in draws, and as the job progresses, you're paying for what you have what you can actually touch. Exactly. And what I'm finding with just, you know, by having a conversation and just, you know, talking to you and even talking to you just, you know, throughout the time that, uh, you know, we, I've met you and even through other municipalities that I have found that it is the, the counties and the other municipalities, their goal is not to make life hard. They're not there to, to just really be a thorn in the side but they're more or less there to assist and to make sure that you get a good product and to protect you because once you prepare for all this stuff up front, it you don't have to fight the battle in the end. Like you said, chasing money. That's exactly correct. Our, our job is to protect the homeowner from something not being done correctly. We enforce what is commonly referred to as the minimum basic standards or, um, since we're talking about plumbing, the Illinois State Plumbing Code, which, as you know, is very um, in-depth and covers everything you could think of and things you wouldn't. 
if you follow that, it is for your safety. What state licensed plumbers like you and like myself have a license issued by the Illinois Department of Public Health. We are the only trade that is governed by the health department because you can get really obviously messed up if your plumbing is not is not done properly. It can actually be a hazard to your health. Absolutely, absolutely. And before I let you go, I've I've got a question for you. One thing that's been pretty sure. popular it, that's uh, with the COVID and everybody having to stay at home. One common things that people have been doing is they have been installing swimming pools. They have been, uh, and with those swimming pools, they've been getting uh, pool heaters and things like that. That has been really uh, a, a common item that, that has been, right. I mean, more so than, than ever before that I've run into. I mean, we've installed a few of them before, but not like this. Now, there's minimum standards on how this has to be run as far as, you know, the depth of the of the gas line and the the wiring that has to be done. And the reason for this is is basically safety, correct? Completely uh, for safety. The uh, minimum depth is 18. Um, they're normally 18 to 24 inches deep. Normally a contractor and homeowners are certainly welcome to do their own work. Uh, they should get a permit and should get it inspected. But homeowners are welcome to do pretty much anything they want to their own house. And you run a plastic, it's yellow plastic, it's available everywhere. It's very, has a very thick wall. You bury that at 18 to 24 and at each end where you come up, no joints in between, run it one piece. Mm -hmm. Run a trace wire on it is the, probably the most important thing. That's a wire, 10 or 12 gauge wire that wraps around the pipe all the way from one end to the other so that you can find it again with a metal detector. Right, because Julie... Then at the end, you come... Yeah, Julie's not going to be able to know. They don't... They'll mark other utilities. They're not going to mark any utilities that you put in unless you specifically do that. A lot of people are under the misunderstanding that Julie would do that. Right. And without that... And that's a... That's the my big problem that I run into, and it has been the year of the pool. I was doing one at least one every day, mm-hmm. and um, without that trace wire, you just don't know it's there. And what color and should that dangerous. be? The trace wire, it doesn't matter. Really? Okay. It, it's normally it's normally yellow or orange. Okay. Because it has a plastic jacket around it. Okay. And you wrap that around the pipe; it comes up at both ends. Uh, with your risers, how you come up out of the ground is also important. You buy a riser, it's already bent at 90 degrees. It's made to do that 18 to 24 okay. depth. The connection is made, that connection is buried. That that piece of pipe comes up, it's, it's rigid, and it has a jacket around it to protect it from weather. And also your weed whackers and lawnmowers and dog chewing on it and grandchildren, and <laughs> no one can really uh, no one can really hurt it. Okay, and uh, that's a very important safety. Well, I, I stand corrected feature. because we have been told that it was supposed to be yellow in um, in in other areas. So it's but it's like a lot of other things. It's different depending on where you go. There's different uh, areas that are you know maybe a little bit more stick, uh, sticklers on certain things than others. But uh, but yeah, the the safety of of the installation and the reason why they're installed are for, are designed to protect and to make sure they can enjoy the pool, enjoy everything, and it's installed property so they get years of enjoyment without having a safety issue. Um, I appreciate you being on the show, Tim, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and all the help that you're doing for the, the residents of Will County. Great. Thanks for having me. Anytime. All right. I appreciate it, sir. And uh, so we want to thank Tim for being on the show. We're going to take a break, and then we will pick it up with Tom uh, Maslowski with what's going down in downtown June 19th, June 19th and June 27th. The Spanish Community Center is um, taking care of all this stuff. They organized a whole bunch of people together. I met a lot of great people yesterday, actually. A lot of new Joliet businesses are coming in and coming out, um, planning some things, you know, There was a lot of music there yesterday. There was food there. 
tons of new um, art vendors, clothing vendors, things like that. It was a really like family oriented, very welcoming environment. We had a good time yesterday. Now the food that was there were they uh, were they just uh, individuals making food, or just uh, or was it local restaurants that kind of came out to uh, to get involved? Yeah, there was the um, Joliet Supermercado Taco Truck was there. Ooh. Chevrolet Latin Cafe was open. Um, and there were a few other places, new places starting up. I did get a few business cards. Some people were so new. A lot of places I found had started off, um, you know, during the lockdown, um, starting their own businesses out of their house and online and doing different things like that. So a few of the people that were out there, had not yet even gotten business cards or kind of just getting everything up and running. And so this was a great opportunity for people to get out and start introducing themselves to the community and just get people, you know, get them on their radar, so to speak. Don't you just love that though? People just starting out and taking that chance to just go in and, and just make that dream come true. Do you know, do what you can take the chance and, you know, see what happens. It's, I, I don't know. I, I love that. That's inspiring. And, uh, you know, cause I did that, and just to see other people do it is great. I agree. I agree. And there actually is still some spots available for vendors, and they're practically giving the vendor spots away. I think it's $10 to rent a spot. Um, it is, By the way, I'm sorry, it's taking place right across the street from the Rialto Square Theater in downtown Joliet. Okay. Um, I don't know if you ever noticed, um, or if anyone from Joliet has ever noticed, there's you know, right like kind of across from the fountain, in the same courtyard, there's a large stage. Um, it's like a giant concrete structure. It's really nice to have power built in and everything. And for a long time, it didn't seem to be getting a ton of use. And um, the art movement actually had something called In the Making. It was um, their festival. It featured you know, all the area artists and musicians. And that was one of the first times that stage had been used like on a regular basis. Um, now Ron Romero from the, the Joliet, I'm sorry, the Illinois Rock and Roll History Museum is also doing like a lunch hour thing where um, starting at noon on Fridays, they actually have bands out there playing. So you're going to start to see a lot more events happening in that courtyard in downtown Joliet. And all of it is just, you know, there for people to come and enjoy the day, try some new food, you know find some new businesses, and there's, of course, a ton of music out there. They actually reached out to a few of the local musicians to see, you know, who they should book. Um, it was a huge variety, too. There was, I saw an indie rock guy playing solo. Brian Motel was there. Um, I saw a hip-hop artist. I saw a mariachi band, and that was what I had time for in the hour that I was there. That is so cool. Um, lots of good. Food. Yeah, it was great. It was a really great time. Everyone was in spirits. There was no like craziness going on. There was plenty of places to hang out and sit and get some shade and get some food. Um, and it's only going to keep ramping up from here too. So the first one they ever tried, I think, really big success. And. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a worthy event for everybody. And I'm going to be um, I did receive a bunch of links and different things to post on what's going down in downtown J Town today. So anyone that would be interested in going, or if perhaps you're interested in being a vendor of some kind, um, that would be pretty awesome too. So I'll be posting all that stuff if you want any more information about that. Oh, absolutely, and I'll be sharing it on the Prepare to Repair uh, uh, Facebook page as well. Um, that is a, just listen to that, that is a really, I want to say, um, a very unique variety of different types of music in one location. Something for everybody. I, I think it's awesome. I mean, it's just, it's, it's got something for everybody. Yeah, I also uh, found a place that was selling ceviche Bloody Marys outside. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, dude, come on. How insanely cool is that? I, I was, I, I didn't have time. It was my mom's birthday. I could not partake. I had to go somewhere else. But my man, a Bloody Mary ceviche. I'm not really one for Bloody Marys, but I do like spicy things. I do like seafood. Oh, man, maybe I'm just going to have to try this and just break my Bloody Mary curse. Everyone's always like, really? You of all people, Mr. Tomato Sauce and Seafood, you don't, you don't like Bloody Marys. Wow. And this feels like I'm drinking a, a cup of spaghetti sauce sometimes. So, 
I don't know if anyone else shares that same sentiment as me or not. I know there's a lot of Bloody Mary fans out there, and I apologize. I'm not trying to single anybody out. Every you know what? Every time I think of uh, Bloody Mary, I think of the movie Bugs Life. I don't know. I, I, my kids were would watch that movie all the time, and there was the mosquito okay. that was at the bar, and he says, "Give me a Bloody Mary." Oh, positive. <laughs> yeah, and that's about what it seems like to me. You know, I, I, that's what I feel like I'm drinking. So that's it. it just sticks in my because I was just saying that to my daughter, and she's like, she laughed, and she's like, "What was that from?" I said, "I think it was Bugs Life," and uh, you know. They used to watch that growing up, but that's that's funny. I mean, you, that you mentioned the uh, um, the Bloody Mary, uh, but I wanted to ask you, um, or I wanted to tell you, I wanted to, one, I wanted to tell you, thank you. I want to thank you because um, the the show is taking a it's evolved, it's evolved and changed um, from the initial concept that I had, in a large part thanks to again, I uh, you know Evan and. Also, thanks to you in adding a broader spectrum to the show in as far as what we touch on. And instead of it being almost like a, you know, just a repair show, it is almost turned into a a converse, it's, it's a conversation that you would have at the kitchen table or uh, sitting out on your deck with family where you'll go in to what you're doing on your house to what you know what are we having for dinner where you're going to eat at what what do you what places are you going to go what community events are you going to attend possibly what you know um what live acts are you going to see where it's all rolled out in different conversations that you will have over the course of just spending time with family so i want to thank you, you know, for helping I, it evolve oh man thank you for having me on board i, I honestly really appreciate the opportunity to be doing this on a radio station, not just on Facebook, you know, can go so far with that. So uh, without you, I would not be on the radio station. So I'd say this is a, uh, a great team effort and uh, hopefully we can continue doing stuff like this. And I also feel like the Joliet community market has that same theme in mind. Um, Alex Paramo is, I think one of the main organizers of this whole thing. Um, with the Spanish Community Center in Juliet. And his whole goal was, listen, you guys need people coming out to your events. We need people coming out to our events. And it's just basically kind of silly that we're all not doing this together. Why don't we enjoy each other's culture and learn about it and talk about it and experience it instead of, you know, the Spanish Community Center had, had their event on this day. And then... Everybody else has their event on this day. Then there's another separate one here. Well, why aren't we all just together? We all live in Joliet. I mean, we all share this town. We all share this space. Why not learn about each other if you haven't already? I mean, it's all great people. <laughs> I mean, we can keep, uh, you know, all the goofy work going on, or we can just, you know, talk to people for ourselves. Just get out there and say hello. Chances are they'll say hello back. Um, I did meet a few new people. There's one new business um, among the many. I mean, we can only talk about so many, right? Um, fine art painting, murals, sip and paint parties. The name of this place was Solar Solutions. I'm sorry, Soul Art Solutions. I read that all as one thing. Sorry. Um, art Solutions is going to be uh, Donna Franks. Donna Franks Tapley will be opening a new business. Um, it's going to be in July. They'll be above Cheesecake by James in downtown Joliet. And what they want to do, um, she was mentioning like Thursday through Sundays, they'll be having, you know, sip and paint kind of things. She has a lot of pottery um, classes and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to see classes. You're going to see events and get out there and BYOB and paint and, and have a couple drinks. You could um, visit her art gallery of her own work. And I did see a lot of her stuff there. She was in the middle of painting something. Uh, while they were all out there. Actually, a lot of the artists were doing live paintings. Um, there were three artists who were working on stuff right there at the event, and that was really, really cool to see some of that stuff come together. Um, I like the behind-the-scenes kind of stuff, so that was really intriguing to me. And that's going to be a mainstay throughout the event. You're going to see that stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm just looking forward to you know all these new businesses introducing themselves, new businesses open up, everyone's hanging out and meeting each other, and then, you know, I think we can really make a good go of it this time here. You know what? It's summer, and you know with the weather uh, with the weather getting nice and all this stuff happening, and everyone being basically cooped up. 
Now's the time to yeah. just get out and say, and just, you know, just hang out with di- just different types of people, eat different types of food, listen to different type of music. And you know what? Get you to might, know your city. You, yeah, you might just enjoy yourself. I mean, and that's that's the one thing that I think that if anything good can come out of what has happened, I think that would be something that would, would be really great to see. And uh, I agree. I also want to ask you, uh, okay, usually you hit us uh, and you throw us some food. What do we got? Got to hit me with some food real quick uh, before we let you go. Food. Well, we've talked about A-ribs. We've done the pub. We've done jitters. We've done Sunshine Mexican Cafe. Did we do... You're the food guy, man. You usually, we... usually leave me, like, you know, starving at the end of this. Come on, you can't disappoint. You're on the spot. Well, I was, you know, I was planning on the whole community center thing. What about... Uh, did we talk about Chevrolet Latin Cafe? I don't think we talked about them very much, actually. Um, they were open during... Yeah, you said they were the at that... Uh, well. Yeah, they were there at the... Um, where you were at this weekend. Yeah, yeah, they were open. Um, they have really good food. Everything is house made. I don't know if you know what an arepa is. An arepa is like, um, so it's like kind of the same, it's kind of like a, a dough made from maize. So it's almost like a corn tortilla. It's almost like a pita in a way. Um, and the sandwiches look like pita sandwiches, sort of. Wow. So it's like, it's, like a, it's like a pocket, so to speak. They have everything in house, too, by the way. Um, and I'm, as a matter of fact, I think those are gluten free. Um, I know your wife has a gluten allergy, so exactly. I, that would be definitely up your alley. But all the meats, it's usually pork, beef, chicken. They do have fish. They have crazy red snapper where you can eat like they bring the whole fish, head, tail, scales, and all right wow. to the plate, man. <laughs> um, they also have um, empanadas. Empanadas are basically like, um, I don't want to downplay it, like, uh, almost like pot stickers in a way, like like dumplings, but they're made from a similar dough as the arepas. They they fry them. There's chicken and beef and cheese inside. It's like a like a I don't know how to describe it. And it's an empanada. It's like a hot pocket, I guess, but uh, that, that's like so downgrading what they are. <laughs> and where are they um, where are they located so people can go over there and uh and check them out and actually, you know, taste this uh taste the empanadas. Oh, my God. The empanadas, the arepas, uh, they actually have the best Cuban sandwich I've ever had in my entire life. Um, let me get the address for you guys here. It is 81 North Chicago Street. It is actually directly behind the fountain in downtown Joliet, if you know where the fountain okay. is, where they put the Christmas tree. Um, uh, Cheesecake by James is on the corner, um, but it's in that courtyard, Chevrolet Latin Cafe. Um, they're open until... Um, We'll look right here, two or three during the week, and then on the weekend, uh, yeah, 11 to 3 during the week, Tuesday through Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday they open until 8. Fantastic. And people want to reach out and uh, see what everything that uh, Joliet has to offer. How did they find you? It's What's Going Down in downtown J-Town. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's also a website that I have with a whole bunch of different things on there. ZestySoul.com, Z E S T Y S O L.com. And if you turn around on that page, you'll see the local music bonanza. You'll see my lessons. You'll see what's going down in downtown J Town podcast. The Joliet Taco Tour is up there. Um, so check it out and hopefully you find what you're looking for. If not, please hit me up. Oh, yeah. They definitely will. And as will. always, I'm sorry, I've got to say, um, I will have the information we talked about today for the Joliet community market pinned to the top of my facebook page definitely sir and as always you are the best informative and the person in the know thank you again for being on the show and look forward to hearing from you next week thanks a lot steve thank you all right you have yourself a good week tom thank you for joining us you too bye all right as we move on with the show uh one thing that is common that people find in Joliet and even parts of Chicago, or actually in Chicago, uh, areas like Aurora and all over, there's old homes. Now, old homes are people fall in love with them for their character, their architecture, and they're just they're just their presence. They're they're beautiful. They're built better, and people just fall in love with them. Now, these homes as great as they are with their character and uh, and their architecture, 
they have their own select bit of challenges. Now, in addition to them being older, you know, and, and having the repairs and the upkeep, they were built with the materials of their day. So if you have a house that's, you know, 40, 50, 60, maybe 70 years old, possibly 80, depending on how old they're going to get, they were built with a lot of these miracle products that uh, they weren't hazards then or deemed hazards then, but are significant hazards now. So when you are, if you have one of these homes, these are things that you should look out for. And even mundane things such as painting can potentially be an issue, especially considering houses that were, if you have a house that was built in, say, 1980 or 81, lead-based paint was banned, I believe, in 1978. But they were still, even though it was banned, they were still allowed to sell off the remaining stock and supplies that they had. So it is possible that that paint was still in being sold or still used, you know, several years beyond that. That's why I use the, you know, 1981, 82 as a, as a barometer on that because it could even, even go further. But lead paint is one of those hazards that if you scrape it, it becomes airborne, it can become toxic. Um, so even, like I said, mundane things such as painting that, you know, if you're scraping or doing whatever, it could be serious. If you have an older home, you want to get things like this checked out because you don't want to, you don't want to unleash a hazard, especially if you have little people around. It, it doesn't take months to do it. And this is a serious hazard. And it's something that the, uh, uh, the EPA has been, and has been monitoring on this because they want to make sure that contractors that are dealing with any kind of, uh, Renovation work are lead certified or uh, lead certified is what they call it. Now, these other products, it's not limited to uh, just lead. If you've got an older home, um, some of these these hazards are in pipe insulation. They're in the walls. Like it could be asbestos has been found to be in pipe insulation. It was in some older, older homes. It was estimated for a few years in the early 1900s, it was used in uh, gypsum plaster. And so if you've got lath and plaster walls, there is a potential for it being there. Um, that's another one you want to check out, too, is the uh, those 1960s you know, and 70s popcorn ceilings that everybody you know cannot stand and they want to scrape it down and paint it. Well, that could potentially uh, carry lead paint and potential uh, asbestos um, that's another one another thing is that's pretty common is if its house was built in say the 60s is the 8 by 8 square tiles these tiles uh, potentially could be um, have asbestos in them along with the glue or mastic that it was used to hold it down so if before you if you have an older home before you do any type of renovations uh that are significant such as opening walls or maybe scraping up tile or things of that nature take a take a few minutes err on the side of caution get this stuff checked out because even even the most simpler project can be something that can uh that can really be a health hazard and possibly deadly these are these are not uh hazards that will kill you overnight there's something that are long term and uh, can really wreak havoc on it. And another thing that uh, I'll throw out there as we uh, wrap up the show, especially on an older house, is the incoming water service. Some of these older homes, especially in like, you know, cities, will have a lead water service. Now, if you are potentially buying a house that has this, you may want to, you know, get the water checked out to make sure what the, uh, you know, what the water quality is, and to make sure you don't have a high lead count on it. Most of these uh, lead pipes have been there for years, and there's a calcium film that's on the inside that would act as a barrier between the water and the lead. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to have any lead in the water; it just act as a barrier to, you know, to minimize it. So, a lot of uh, municipalities are making these be removed as repairs are being done and uh, modifications are being made 
But if you're buying a house, this is something that you're going to want to look at to uh, to definitely, you know, err on the side of safety, you know, caution. Because, you know, again, these hazards, they were they were built, you know, years ago. And now times have changed and we found out a lot of information and how dangerous these products actually are. Um, so there's a lot of education online that you can look up so you can get all the information you need. There's plenty of abatement companies out there that will be able to assist you in finding the right answers. And I'm looking to get some of these abatement companies on, on the show as we, uh, as we move forward, because this is some very helpful information, especially with a lot of people having older homes. So, um, as we, uh, as we move forward, I want to, uh, I could probably give another helpful tip out there because I wanted to talk about that and I got a couple more minutes left. Um, one thing I want to throw out there is I'll throw out there and talk a little bit about drain cleaners. Chemical drain cleaners are one of those products. They tell you exactly what it says right on the bottle, right then and there. It, most of the time, your clogs are further down the line. If you look on the bottles, look on a commercial, they always show it clearing it in a J, which is your trap. You're all, if you had a problem there, you just take apart the trap and clean it out. So, don't spend the money on the drain care products. They're usually caustic and they don't do the job. Nine times out of 10, your problem is 10, 12 feet down the line. It's not going to work. These products are mostly acid-based, meaning when they hit water, they create heat. When they create heat, what they do is they create heat and theoretically melt the most common clog, which is grease. Grease would in turn get melted and flush down the drain. Well, it's not going to melt a, it's not going to get that water hot enough to melt a clog 10, 12, 20 feet down the line. So essentially you're wasting money. And these other products that they tell you, baking soda, vinegar, and all the other, they're just a science project. Unless it's something that is going to get down the line and clear it, it's not going to work. Save your money on the products. Save your money on you know dumping all this stuff down the drain. If the line is clogged, have it rotted by a licensed professional Get a warranty on it. When we rod drains, we give a uh, minimum, uh, a one-year warranty based on the quality of the line, or the, the, not the quality, but the um, condition of the line and what's being put down there. And uh, this way, you'll know it's done right and it's cleaned properly. So as we finish up the show, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And hopefully you learned a little bit about your home community and some good eats. And uh, you will we'll be able to see you next week. But don't forget, check us out on the prepare to repair show dot com and email us at prepare.